All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. All right, and um, as always, you know, I pray Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, he allow these lessons to be edifying to those of the whole four elect. All right, and um, the title of this video is um something around the lines of maybe uh Yahweh Shai died for the elect. Alright. Because when you narrow uh you narrow it down, you know, who the Lord came for, we know that he came for who? He came for the nation of Israel. And uh you have Christians who that believe in Christianity according to the government churches which is a false doctrine. They believe the Lord, you know, came and died for everybody. Okay, that's not the case. When you narrow it down, you know that he, he was for his people. Matthews 1, 21, Matthews 2, 5 through 6. All right, and that's, you know, it's another precepts for another lesson and, a, and another topic. But we know that not only just the Israelites, but even narrow it down even more deeper that the Lord really died for the elect, okay? And um, I wanna be able to prove that through these precepts, okay? And through, you know, through the elect that was given to Yahweh Shai, all Israel, okay, is is uh, is delivered, okay? So it's like, it's order, all right, it's order. So let's just go into it, enough talking. Uh, St. John chapter 10 and 25, it says, Yahweh Shai answered them, I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So even the Lord here is saying that not all Israel is of the elect because not all Israel was following Yahweh Shai which the world today calls ignorantly Jesus Christ, all right? His name is Yahweh Shai, and not even all his own people was following him or believed in him. So he says, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So wherever the Lord goes, that's where the Lord's elect follow. Now it says, verse 28, and I gave unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay? So this is very possessive of the Lord to say, okay, and to speak about his chosen. All right? Very possessive. This is not talking about any other nation. And even narrowing it down, he's talking about a chosen within the chosen. All right? Let me... uh read verse 29 my father which gave them to me my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand so Yahweh Shai is saying that the elect all right and I must say starting with the men all right because um matter of fact I'm gonna come back to John 10 let me just get a quick precept this is Revelations 21 and 3 it says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and he, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the most high himself shall be with them and be their power. So the tabernacle of the Lord is men. And this is why you have the 144,000, all right, 12,000 in each tribe is men, all right, which makes up that government body of Yahweh Shai. That election, that the ones that was given to Yahweh Shai back, which we were reading, all right, which we were reading back here in John 10, 10 and verse 29. I'm gonna read it again. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. All right, so when you narrow things down, all right, the Lord really died for the elect, because through the elect, 
then the rest of Israel is, is saved, you know? All right. So let me grab another precept here. This is in the book of John again, chapter six. And go all the way down to verse 35. All right. It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. All right, so that you know that's a cut also on that Trinity doctrine, in which Christianity teaches that the Father and Son is is uh, one entity, and that's not the case. They're two different entities, man. All right, Yahweh Shai came to do the work of the Most High in the flesh. All right, he was sent from the Heavenly Father. So there's two different entities. You have a higher power, you have a lesser power. All right. So he says, "For I am come, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will." But the will of him that sent me, and this is my father's will, which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. It says, verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and will raise him up at the last day. All right. So he says, and this is the will of him that sent me, Yahweh, that every one which seeth and seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. All right, and who is that? Uh, who so? Who is that? Um, that believeth on him would be the elect. All right, even today in 2021, as uh, Elder Apostle Zahar coined this year, the the year of the hasting unto the coming of our Lord. All right, which we're we're hasting. All right, for the, the day of the Lord to come. Right, praying for a few days unto this place, you know, that prophecies be fulfilled. Even today, you have Israelites who don't believe in Yahweh Shai. You have Old Testament Israelites who don't believe in the Lord. All right. You have uh Israelites that don't call themselves Israelites, they call themselves blacks and Latinos, all right, West Indians, Haitians, and so-called Native American Indians. They don't even believe. So even back then, all right, you didn't have all Israel believing in the Lord. So it says, and this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Uh, John 17 and uh, verse 9, get straight to it. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So. Yahweh Shai is telling you he didn't pray for the world. Okay, he only prayed for them. Who was the them? This is very possessive. All right. This is complete opposite of what you learn in the government churches of Christianity. Complete opposite. You know, you don't hear these, these them pastors and preachers bringing this scripture out. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Now, of course, you know, they screw up this word world because they don't go into it. And this world, world here, and I believe is cosmos. Let me see here. The word world, yep, cosmos, which cosmos means separate society. All right. And even this blue letter goes off a tad. But we know, we have to understand and know what these words mean. The word world, you have um, in the scriptures, you have uh, the word world, which can go back into oinklamene. It can go into the, it can mean cosmos. Um... Unclemente, Unclemente, Cosmos, and also Eon. All right, so this is why it's important to look up the words. All right, so this word world here, he says, for I pray for them, I pray not for the world, which is Cosmos, a separate society, a world within the world. All right, he's not talking about any other nations. And even so, to be more narrow, he's not even talking about all of Israel. He's talking about his elect. You know, a precept coming in mind is... um. When Yahweh Shai spoke in parables to the Israelites that were listening and, and listening to him prophesize and, and, and teach, you know, and he spoke plainly uh, to the disciples, 
And then the disciples asked him, why do you speak in them in parables? Because he said it's not for them, uh, uh, it's not to be given to them, but it's be, be to be given to, to you, roughly paraphrasing. All right, so he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them, here's the possessive, but for them which thou has given me, for they are thine. So the Lord have given him the elect, and it starts with the men. Okay, and you're, gonna have, you're also gonna have elected women, but it starts with the men first. Okay, because the men are the heads. All right, Apostle Paul went into that. All right, so anyway, uh, let's move on. Another precept I have here is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, and uh, verse 8. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one say, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes, that I may not destroy them all. See? Because we know through, through precepts, all right, Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. The Lord said he's going to destroy two thirds of his people, but he's going to save that one third, which is the election. OK. So as we read in here, as he says, thus saith Yahweh, as the new wine is found in a cluster and one say, destroy it not for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake that I may not destroy them all. Uh, thinking of Amos nine and eight. I'm going to come back real quick. I'm going to get this preset. This is in the book of uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Uh, let's, I'm going to read it quickly. Behold, the eyes of Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahweh. See? For lo, I will command and shift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is shift in a sheaf, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So two thirds of the Lord's people have pride and they think that the Lord won't judge them. OK, they don't even consider. But the Lord said that one third. He said he would not destroy utterly Jacob. He will shift them uh, as a sheaf. He says, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So not one of the Lord's elect that is given to Yahweh Shai, all right, is going to be left behind. So let me go back to uh, the book of Isaiah 65 and verse 8. Thus saith Yahweh, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one say, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. You know, Salaki, I'm thinking of another precept that come in mind where, the scriptures say the portion of Jacob is not like them. So let me read verse 9 again. It says, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob because there's an election of the elect. You have a chosen of the chosen. Israel is chosen, but there's a special chosen of that chosen. OK, which is destined for deliverance. You know, Yahweh recovering that remnant. It says, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, which is Yahweh Shai. All right. Mountains represents government. The Lord, the Heavenly Father is sending Yahweh Shai to he's sending Yahweh Shai back to recover the remnant of his elect. Right. But also to establish the Heavenly Father's government on this earth. And that's going to go out through the face of the whole earth, starting with Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, and my elect shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there uh, and my servant shall dwell there all right because the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth all right uh uh john the revelator all right he spoke about seeing a new heaven he had the vision he saw the new heaven all right which is here on earth a new rulership a new age you know a world with a world without end the world of israel which is in the book of daniel's Matter of fact, I'll just get it for the sake because I don't want to mess it up and butcher the scripture. 
This is in the book of Daniel's chapter 7 and 18. It says, uh, but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right. And who's going to take the kingdom? Yahweh Shai. He's going to take this kingdom from you Edomites. He's going to take this world and he's going to destroy this rulership. All right. At the end of this age of Esau and his blessing of ruling over the world. Okay. So he says, but the saints, which the saints are the Israelites, but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever now when you jump down to verse 27 it says and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him so there's no getting around this okay the blessing goes to jacob which are the Israelites and the kingdom of heaven, which we read in the scriptures, all right, is given to these people. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. All right, so now let's move on. Let me go back to Isaiah. Let me see if I read it all. Isaiah 65 and verse 8 and uh, verse 9. I'll read 9 again. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. All right, so let me get my final precept in it with this uh, cluster of great. All right. Now, it says 2nd Ezra 9 and 21, and I saw, let's go into it, let me go into it, 21, let's see, right, let's read this and I'll end this show, Lord willing, I hope you're edified, uh, verse 18, 2nd Ezra 9 and 18, and now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speck against me, for then every one obeyed. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable rid themselves. So I considered the world and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were coming to it. And I, and I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant and a plant of a great people. Which is talking about the elect. Alright. It says. Let the multitude perish then. Which was born in vain. And let my grape be kept. And my plant. For with great labor. Have I made it perfect. Alright. So. Hey. All praises Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Alright. The Lord is. um, The Lord Yahweh Shai died for the elect man. You know. And that's the point of this lesson. I didn't hope I didn't drift away from it. But uh, Yahweh Shai died for the elect when you narrow things down. All Israel is saved through Yahweh Shai, but it's according to the order that he set up, which is through his elect. All right. Yahweh Shai technically died for the elect because through the elect, all Israel will be saved. You know, because in the kingdom, we know, we understand that first resurrection is, you know, those are, that are a part of the first resurrection is blessed. All right. So in the kingdom, when the Lord allowed the men to be fruitful, you know, and to uh, reap the benefits of the earth, okay, and to live perfectly, then we're going to have babies, all right? And those babies going to come out of Israelites, which are the two-thirds coming back, all right? Now, we understand also that the scriptures speak of reincarnation, and that's also for another topic to go through the precepts, all right? And then another thing why Christianity don't like to get into that is because it, it, it destroys their doctrine. All right. If reincarnation exists, you know, so you have to pay for the sins. All right. Of your forefathers, because you are your forefathers coming back third and fourth generation. So, Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.